Hello and welcome back to another episode of She Walks, She Paints. Thank you for joining me again and if you have been watching my other videos and either liking, commenting or subscribing, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. It's really helping with my channel. Today we're on a very local walk so we haven't come far at all. I know in a lot of my videos it seems like we're going to lots of far-flung places in Scotland and we do love doing adventures like that but you can also have some great walks just on your doorstep. So we're in Kirkcaldy which is in Fife where we live. It's a bit of the town that I haven't actually explored yet so we're going to start at Seafield Tower and then we're going to walk back along the coast to where we live which is a bit more familiar to for me it's still quite new so i'm still finding places to explore so this will be a nice surprise for me to find out what kakadi has to show and yeah hopefully it'll be a really good day so let's head out see what we can find Going, hey pups, we're going to the beach. Let's go. Seafield Tower is all that remains of a small castle built in the 1540s. It passed through various owners over the next 200 years and was finally abandoned by the Methven family in 1733, leaving it to fall into disrepair and ruin. Where I am standing would have been a storage area, with a great hall above it and the Lord's accommodation on the upper levels. It's amazing to think that this shell of a building was home to so many people over the years.
but that was Seafield Tower that we've just been to and now we're heading off along the coast and we're going to end up at Ravens Creek Castle which is really familiar to me and Jack we've been there quite a few times we're going to finish the walk at Dysart Harbour which I did show on Instagram a few weeks ago and people said they wanted to see some more because it's a really beautiful historical harbour so we're going to finish our walk there so let's crack on it's pretty warm today so summer has definitely hit Scotland took its time just a really lovely afternoon to enjoy It's like elderflower, but the leaves are really dark. I wonder if it's a different variety. Love elderflower. This definitely means it's summer. I just came to have a look at these big daisies because they're so beautiful. And if Jack doesn't stand on all of them, we found wild strawberries! Amazing! They're like little jewels! Beautiful! When we were kids, we always used to call this cuckoo spit, but it's uh, the larvae of a frog hopper. It's inside there, growing. That's quite an old find. A few million years, maybe. I'll take it home. Maybe that could be my new studio mascot. is over a mile long and because of this Kakadi is known as the Lang Tun as it is stretched out along the coast. Every spring it hosts the Lynx Market, the longest street fair in Europe and also the oldest funfair still running in Scotland as it was first established in 1304. Hey puppy dog, you're on the wrong side of the wall. This building was the house of a wealthy shipowner and merchant, built in the 1590s. 
400 years later, the exterior was restored to its former glory by the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust. Ravenscraig Castle was built in 1460, commissioned by King James II for his wife Mary of Gelders. Unfortunately, neither James or Mary saw the castle completed before they died, and their son, James III, gifted it to the Sinclair family. They turned it into the heavily defended fortress we see today, with 3.5 metre thick walls. This is probably the reason that it was chosen to be used as an ammunition depot during the First World War.
we're on the last little leg of the walk now. We're just going through Ravenscraig Park and we saw Ravenscraig Castle back there, which is really cool. So that's our local castle. <laughs> so it's within walking distance of our house, which is quite cool. We're really lucky to have this park and the castle and the beaches on our doorstep. So we do really, really appreciate that. And it's been so lovely to just come out of the house and enjoy it. And I hope you guys are enjoying it too. So this last little bit, we're going to go along the coast a bit more and we're going to get to Dice at the Harbour, which I think I've said this a few times on the channel, but you might recognise it if you're an Outlander fan. There's not many places you can go to in Scotland that aren't used in Outlander. So, uh, yep, we'll head on there and I'll see you there. The harbour here at Dyset dates back to the 1450s, but it really thrived during the 1700s. This made it the perfect location to film scenes set in the French port of Le Havre in the second season of Outlander.
have it. That's a little tour of uh, Kakadi and Dysert, which is where we live. So this is a, our local walk. It's pretty much the closest walk you can do to our house. So I hope you enjoyed the little tour, walk along the beaches, having a little paddle, which was really much needed because uh, my feet were very hot. <laughs> it's amazing the amount of stuff that I found to photograph on the way. Like I didn't expect all those wild strawberries and all the flowers and so many bees buzzing around. It's really, really gorgeous today. So um, yeah, it's amazing what you can find just on your doorstep at home as well. You just need to look closely for it. So there we go, that's us done for the day. We're gonna walk back home. We don't have to drive and we might stop off on the way home for a little bit of refreshment after that warm day walking. So I will see you there. Otherwise, I will see you back in the studio. I was actually intending to paint something else in this walk, but the photo I took of the wild strawberries really caught my eye. They are such jewel-like, beautiful things, and I wanted to try and capture them. I wanted to apply a wash of colour to every section of the painting, so I could erase the pencil marks quickly before continuing. I love being able to use these watercolour pens to apply pigment directly to the page. This helps me achieve the depth of colour I need for these berries. Small native strawberries have been grown in Britain for centuries, but they aren't viable as a commercially grown crop. It wasn't until the early 1800s that growers in Europe managed to create a hybrid of varieties from both North and South America to create the fruit that we enjoy today.
Parts like this, with tiny details, require a lot of focus, but I find it quite therapeutic as I don't think about anything else while I'm doing it. I have to be really careful about how much water I apply to the page with the brush. Too much can overblend the colour and ruin the tiny details I'm trying to capture. If you like what I do, you can support me in many different ways. You can like, comment or subscribe for free, you can buy a print from my Etsy store, or you can donate the cost of a coffee on my Ko-fi page. All of these things really do help me keep going with this channel. Dare you try it? Yes, 100%. <laughs> Very nice. You're not jumping in? No way, Jose.